Hi there, this is Klaus Hermann from farbspielfoto.com. Most likely you've just watched my previous tutorial on Smarter Sharpen or how to turn any sharpening method into a non-destructive sharpening method. Um, and just right after recording that video, it occurred to me that it would be a really cool idea to record an action or create an action set actually that you could download and that would do all the great, crazy great stuff that you see in this tutorial with one single click and where you could even record your own sharpening methods and have them run inside an action so that you don't need to spend any time, you don't need to get your head around all this stuff. Just download the action and you're ready to go, okay? So this is what this tutorial, this little bonus tutorial is about. And I'm just going to show you how to uh, use and install um, and extend the actions that you are able to download from the tutorial page. So first of all, what you need to do is to download the actions or the action set from the web page of the tutorial. Okay, so if you go to the uh, to our website, um, to the post about the Smarter Sharpen method, um, then you can scroll down and download the action set, which is a uh, file with the extension ATN. I'm not going to, to tell you how to download that. I assume that you are able to do this yourself. Um, but once you did download it to some location, you will have a file that looks like this. Okay. First field action smarter sharpen dot ATN. Um, I have put it on my desktop. You may have put it into another folder. Wherever you look, located it, just navigate to that uh, spot on your file system. And the easiest way to get those actions into Photoshop is to just double click. Okay, so I'm just double clicking. Photoshop is already open, so that makes it very fast. And you can see, let me expand this, that you have the actions in the actions panel here. Farbspiel actions, smarter, sharpen, and there are four actions in that set. Now. There's also another way to install them. If you have the action set op uh, actions panel open, uh, to open it, go to Window and click on Actions. And if you have it open, just click on this small icon at the right top of the panel and go to Load Actions. And then you can navigate to wherever you may have put that file. Um, I'm already at my desktop. And you can select the file, click load, and it, you have the same result actually. So all the actions are in the actions panel. Now there's a couple of ways of using these actions. If you don't want to get your head around anything, and if you're just content with using Smart Sharpen inside those actions, uh, and turn that into a non-destructive sharpening layer, um, you can just go ahead and run the first action in the set, which says Smart Sharpen, parenthesis, run to sharpen, okay? So just choose that. Make sure that you have an image layer selected, okay? It doesn't have to be the background layer. You may have multiple layers, uh, adjustment layers, and all kind of stuff in your Photoshop project. But in order to create the sharpening layer, you need to select an image layer first, so a pixel layer, okay? So the easiest way would be to, if you preserve the background layer, the original one that you loaded into Photoshop, just choose that layer, because that's got all those pixels in an unalterated way uh, and you can just apply the sharpening to that and then move your sharpening layer to the very top of your layer stack, okay? That's probably the best way of applying this. But you can apply the action to any pixel layer that you have in your project. I happen to have my background layer only here and I'm just selecting that. I click on the Smarter Sharpen uh, action here and by the way it could be that that action set is closed so if it's closed just, just expand it by clicking on this little arrow here to the left and click on the first action here and go down down to the icons in the actions panel and click the play button okay and you see after like a split second the smart sharpen uh, dialog turns up and you are able to dial in some parameters here so the action has already created our base layer and the sharpen layer and is now um, asking you to uh, dial in some parameters for the smart sharpen uh, filter. And once you're done with that, you can go ahead and tweak those for the specific image, of course. Once you're done, click OK. And the action is going to go ahead and apply that filter to your image pixels, which 
depending on the specific uh, filter you're using, can take a few seconds. And once it's done, the action continues and applies all the magic that you've seen in the previous tutorial to this sharpened layer. It turns it into, uh, it, it, it starts the apply image um, tool and it turns it into a, uh, a layer that you can put right at the top of, just, of your image stack and it's going to, be, to sharpen everything that's beneath it. Now, there's a couple of great things that you can do with this action set. It's actually very flexible and it lets you uh, choose from a number of uh, pre-recorded sharpening uh, steps or actions and you may even extend it with your own preferred sharpening method, okay? So let me just show you how this, how this works. As you've seen, to actually run the sharpening, you just start the smarter sharpen action up here. But you have those three steps here that are separate actions and that are used by the smarter sharpen action up there. And the interesting stuff happens in the step two, your method, okay? If you expand that, you see that we have a number of sharpening methods and that's all built into Photoshop. So they will all be available to you as long as you're using Photoshop CC. Um, so we have a number of these uh, sharpening methods here pre-recorded for you. And if you'd like to, to uh, not use Smart Sharpen, but maybe Unsharp Mask on a specific image, you can do so easily by just removing the check mark that you, use, that you see here on the left side from the Smart Sharpen step and just um, add a check mark uh, at the Unsharp Mask step, okay? The important thing is just to not check more than one of those tasks because if you do that the action is going to apply those sharpening methods on top of one another and that's usually not what you want you usually want to to apply only one sharpening method here so choose the one you prefer and add the check mark to the left and remove all the other check marks the other great thing about this action set is that you can actually extend the number of methods with your own preferred one or with multiple ones if you if you like um, so how is this done? Let me just close this for the moment. And in order to extend the, the actions, you're going to add your own method to, the, to, to step two here. But what you have to do before you can do this is to run step one. Okay, so again, select the image uh, layer that you want to apply the sharpening to or that, one that you want your sharpening to be based on. Um, choose this step one create layers and click the play button down here in the uh, icon bar and you see that the base layer and the sharpen layer are created for you now that's the first thing that you need to do next just expand this step to your method action and select the last uh, sharpening method in this list you can select really select any of those but uh, your your new method is going to be inserted below the one that, it, that you select. So it's probably best to just uh, select the last one here. And then what you do with the sharpen layer selected, and that's going to be the case uh, after you run the, the create layers uh, action, you just hit the record button here. So that's the, the, the uh, circle button here. It's going to turn red. And that tells you that anything that you do right now from, from this point on is going to be recorded in this action. Now, it is important that you don't do anything else now, but you just apply your sharpening method. Okay. So um, to do this, I'm going to filter and I'm going to apply Topaz in focus as a sharpening method. Topaz in focus is opening, it's analyzing my image and I'm just going to pick one of those uh, presets here. That's probably not the best one for this image, but I'm not going to waste any time uh, optimizing those uh, parameters. I'm just clicking OK to show you the how to extend the action set. And uh, in focus is going to take a few seconds and process the image and it's going to be then back to Photoshop. So Topaz in focus has just finished processing the image layer. and you see that now Topaz in Focus is appearing in the list of the your method action, and it's got a check mark to the left of it. Um, and you're still recording. That is important to note. Okay, so right after your sharpening method has finished processing the image layer, it is very important to click the stop button here. Okay, because otherwise everything that you do from that point on will end up in that action, and that's absolutely not what you want. So. 
once you've recorded your action here, there's two things that you can do or that you should do. One is if you would like to use it right away, just remove the check mark from any other of those steps, as I told you before, to make sure that uh, in, the, in that case, Topaz in focus is the only one selected. And the other one is to go right of the check mark, there's another box here that you can click. And you can click on that, and that shows you this little tiny window icon. And what that does is it tells Photoshop to not simply apply the parameters, the, the sharpening method with the parameters you've dialed in, but to open the filter and let you dial in new parameters. Okay, that's important. So have a check mark here and uh, make sure that this window icon is selected. Now, there is an exception here. If you have a sharpening method that doesn't take any parameters, like for example, Photoshop's sharpen or sharpen more methods, this is actually not available. So you can click here, but nothing will happen because you cannot change the parameters of these methods, okay? Now that you've recorded your own sharpening method here in the list and you activated it by, by ticking the check mark here, you can just close that and I'm just going to get rid of those because we don't need them anymore. I'm going, I want to go back to the initial state of the document. And then you can just click the sh uh, smaller sharpen as we did uh, at the beginning. Press play. And you see that in focus pops up. It, it gives you the, the chance of changing those parameters that you've uh, set uh, when you run it the last time or, or when you run it as you recorded it. Um, you can change those here and then click OK and it's going to apply that filter to your image and then it's going to run through to the end and create your sharpening layer. Now you've already seen that you can tell Photoshop to open the filter that you're applying and to be able to change the parameters or to just run the filter with the parameters that you selected during the recording. And that enables you to run the whole action in quiet mode, so to speak. So if, for example, you decide that you have um, used or recorded the Smart Sharpen filter with the perfect parameters for just about any image that you want to uh, process, you can just go ahead and disable the window icon here. And of course, set the check mark to this uh, filter here. And if you do this and you run the Smarter Sharpen uh, action, uh, Photoshop is not going to show you the Smart Sharpen um, tool window but it's just going to run the filter with the parameters that you recorded. Now, for one thing that you can do is just run it in quiet mode, okay? The other thing is you'll probably never find a set of parameters that works perfectly for any image that you put into this. Um, so you can also record Smart Sharpen a couple of times, for example, with different parameters and have that all in your list and then decide which one you want to use. Um, now, there's unfortunately no way to rename those steps in an action, so it may be a bit confusing to do this, but in principle, that's possible, okay? Okay, that's all from me for this bonus tutorial about the Smarter Sharpen action set that you can download. Um, I hope you're having fun with this. I hope this whole technique is going to make your workflow so much better and faster. And um, just feel free to leave any comment or any suggestion below in the comments and I'll be happy to get back to you. So, see you, bye-bye, and keep creating. <laughs>